Are you uncomfortable networking for a job, finding employees, or even customers? Well, we're going to talk about that today on the Peter McClellan Show. We start now. Live from the Twin Cities, it's the Peter McClellan Show. Peter McClellan, CHFC, is the president of the 401k Latte Company. Peter has helped his financial planning clients for more than 20 years with advice about their money, their families, and their life goals. Find out more online at 401klatte.com. Invest in a conversation now. Here's Peter McClellan. And welcome to the Peter McClellan Show. This is your host, Peter McClellan. Thanks for listening. You know, we uh, are going to focus on this aspect of, of networking today. We're, we, we welcome back uh, Perry Ferrando. And Perry, um, you are uh, obviously focused on, on networking and, and also engineering and a kind of a mixture of things. But this is a great topic because you're, th- that question goes right to the heart of where a lot of people are today. You know, they, they might be very uncomfortable trying to find a job because they desperately need a job. So uh, that's, that's part of it. Or, or an employer might be looking for just that right person and, and uh, not, not, not find the one they want. So talk to us about marketing or about, you know, networking. Yeah, I guess the, well, first, thanks for having me back again. Oh, it's it's it great was, having you. It was a great experience last time, and I got a lot of good feedback from it. Did so. you? I'm glad to hear that. That's good. So just know that when you come on the Peter McClellan Show, you're going to get good feedback. Good. All right. <laughs> or the, if I don't promote it, who will, right? <laughs> that's, so, someone has to. Somebody's right? got to. So go ahead. So what were you going to say? Well, the, the, this whole concept of networking, last time I was on the show, kind of off, off the air, we talked about anyone that's in business is ultimately in marketing. That's true. And one of the things that I've been given a lot of feedback on is that I'm pretty good with networking and Mm -hmm. I'm not even sure what that means. Mm -hmm. Uh, But really just that, I guess to me, my definition of it is uh, just being out there talking to people, being interested in people and being a resource. Mm -hmm. And uh, as we talked just a little bit ago, one of the, one of the things that's happened to me over time is people just keep coming to me asking for, do you know such and such, or do you know someone who can do this? And it goes beyond just what I do in the engineering area and right. product and product design or manufacturing type uh, test support that I provide. And oftentimes I do know the person or can find a person for them even outside my specialty area. Mm-hmm. Um, in fact, I was just in a meeting with a um, kind of a big meeting yesterday with a bunch of people and a person sitting next to me in the meeting I didn't know before, they were from Atlanta. We talked just briefly, and she was asking me, well, maybe you can help with this one problem that my, my husband has a company mm-hmm. and needs help with an electrical design issue. And she said, do you think you could help him? Because he's developed this, and it's failed test twice, mm. and we don't want to fail a third time. It's costing us time and money. And I said, well, I'm not sure if I can help you for sure. depends upon what the problem is, but I probably can find someone that can solve it. And I've already yeah. thought of at least two people, oh, from what I understand, that might be able to help him out. Wow. So you, you seem to have that. I, I listened to a, um, oh, what do you call it, a, a audio book of The Turning Point. And I, I, don't remember, I don't remember what they call the exact term. But somebody, there are those people out there that are connectors that, you know, just are the go-to people. And uh, another one I've met over the years here now has been Bernie Schwab from the, the Spruce Valley Payroll Service. He, he just knows a, a ton of people. And, and it's just... In your realm, you're you're just you know all kinds of people, all walks of life. Not necessarily engineering, but like right. you say, you, because you just have that ability to connect. Uh, you know a lot of people, and you you, you obviously you, you pay attention because you know a lot of people go through life they don't ever they, they they come across the same type of contacts, but they just they don't ever register. They don't it doesn't stick with them, and uh, you know it's it's it's, it's, it's a unique uh, a knack a gift if you will. So, and I think the. The area where I probably got it from, because I think people kind of have this opinion that people are either natural for networking or they're not, mm-hmm. and and maybe there is some of that, but I think you can do it in a way, and that's kind of how I titled the show today was "Good Networking." Yeah, because I think there's a way you can look at it. It's very negative and very self-centered, and I would kind of give my give credit to my mother for just the way that she is. A very typical, I shouldn't say typical, maybe, but. Uh, very caring mother, mm-hmm. 
and you know just about other people and what's going on in their lives and I think that kind of rubbed off on me to a point where when someone says uh, something to me I can respond to it and listen and mm. and not just kind of shortchange them or listen for where I can get my my point in okay and uh, for instance that same meeting yesterday someone else I ran across we had about a 10 minute talk about surgical stapling devices mm -hmm. and partway through he says I'm probably boring you to death I said well no this is very interesting to me because he was talking about how the market is and how you actually get these products out there that part would be interesting I don't know if I'd be intrigued by the staples but yeah no I, I, I agree with you yeah and I think that's the part I saw was it wasn't just about staples it was how it was way beyond that for him mm. and if I could ask enough questions to get him to discuss that then I could understand something that actually relates to me and I could ask some questions back and it was actually 10 minutes of very engaging conversation but he got concerned that he was boring me and I thought that was a good example of I guess the way that I think not just I react to it but if anyone chose to react to it that way you know don't just hear what's on the surface the stapler right you know think about what's maybe going on beyond that you know how is the business doing what kind of doctors use that device and again, it got into a more lengthy marketing type conversation than it did about because his ultimate point was it's not only about the product, it's about how it gets sold sure. and how it moves. Interesting. And they actually do staple people, huh? They just. <laughs> well, I guess, yeah. They, there's the metal staplers, and yeah. this particular company does um, um, absorbable ones. Oh, go really? Away, so minimizing wow. scars and. Neat. I mean, I don't know if I could repeat his whole 10 minutes. Right, Maybe we don't right. want to do that either. But No, no, that's fine. I just, <laughs> I'm sort of intrigued on one level, and on another level, I'm thinking, ooh, stapling people, you know. But <laughs> I guess the docs have fun with that. People get out of hand, you could hit them in the head with it, you know, and just. It gives you options. <laughs> it's going to dissolve. It's okay. <laughs> but uh, no, it's a good thing. So, um, so tell us, you know, the, the, main, the main thrust of your company, let, let's, let's showcase that too. What is the. The, the, you know, center point, you know, the. Yeah, the, my background is first off mechanical engineering, but it's way beyond that what I'm able to offer to companies. Right, in terms of networking, yeah. Yeah, no the, the networking, the kind of the core work that I do for organizations really is developing test strategies. A lot of my work in medical device arena, uh, and so it's really on the product design or product manufacturing aspects. And when they have issues, how to get a test strategy to break through that. You had shot me a, a note on, on what we're going to cover today, and you talked about NPD. Oh, NPD, New Product Development. Oh, okay. All right. The acronym. Yeah. All right. Got it. Got it. So you're, you're helping, helping companies test uh, the actual products or, or actually test the market for the products? It, yes to both. Yes to both. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wow. All right. So, so anyway, but... Um, Big question: Why why should a company care about you know if you can network? But why is that such a big thing? Well, just that there's a lot of different things that um, they may need. Uh, for instance, they may be looking to hire people, mm -hmm. and just with my network, I either possibly know the person or at least probably know someone that knows them. Mm. And, and kind of come back to an earlier point you made, and I was going to make a comment is. I don't know so much that I have a good network, but the people I know do. Sure, sure. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so I don't always know everyone, no, but I know not. someone that probably does. Right, right. And so companies I've been doing work for more offline uh, will say, well, by the way, we're looking to hire this person, bring them into the group. Right. How do you think they'd fit? Do you know them? Because uh, we've interviewed and we think they're good, but yeah. you may have run across them before. There's so certainly that aspect that I've brought to companies, not as part of the formal role, but as a, um, I'll call it kind of a service that I can offer on the side. Well, if somebody, if a company's looking to hire somebody, I mean, it, it's a big decision. Yes. And especially for a small company, it, it, you get the wrong person and it can be a, a very costly mistake. Very costly. So have you ever had it where somebody comes up and says, we're thinking about hiring Joe, you know, Joe, whoever, and you you have you've had some experience that hasn't been good or you might say uh you know i guess the thing that for me is i always think there's someone that has a a niche that they can work well in okay and you know i've seen people in past experiences get fired from certain positions but there's other positions they would have done better in within the organization sure 
And so it, it's not so much that I've had so-called bad experiences with them, but mm -hmm. here's the types of things they do good at. Right. And if you have those types of roles, I think they would excel in those roles. Okay. And, yeah. and again, it's part of the, that networking attitude almost of, you know, digging in a little bit deeper. It's not that they're a bad person. It was probably a bad situation. Sure. And try and look for what that ideal situation would be for them. Well, and there, there are some people that, that are, are uh, I, would, I would say, you know, there, there's quality people out there and there's some that aren't so quality or don't apply themselves or whatever. You know, there's, I, I think today we contend more with an attitude with some, some folks. But uh, there are those people out there that have excellent attitudes that you'd want to be part of your team. And, uh, and certainly those are people, if there really was someone in that case, right. um, very easily to say, well, I'm not sure I know much about them or could find out much, and they, they kind of get the idea. <laughs> you blink, blink, nod, <laughs> nod. <laughs> you don't want to say too much. You don't want to have defamation of character or anything, but it's, it's, it's a sticky wicket. I, you know, it, but, yeah, it's, it's a hot potato. It's a, it's a tough one. But you, you do need to you know, be honest. It's, just, it's, it's a challenge how you, how you package that. Yeah, it depends upon how close I am with them. But usually if I've been working with them, we're close enough where I can, I can give them an idea of the potential good aspects they have and the potential issues to be aware of and what they might need to, to watch for. Okay. So what happens in a situation like this where there's no initial benefit or obvious benefit for you? Uh, well, I guess one of the things in is everyone probably, well, not everyone, but most people experienced in 2009 was a tough, tough economy. Oh, yeah. And one of the things that I personally did was kind of took a personal focus to try and help others understand networking, how to get out there and get their own jobs. Uh, I mean, my own business struggled to a point, certainly wasn't where I was in 2008. Right. Um, but I actually dedicated a part of 2009. A good chunk of my priority was to go help some friends that were those quality people, mm -hmm. either get networked into companies, understand even what they need to go do to go find a job. Some of them have been with one organization for 15, 20 years, and how do you, how do you break out of that chain? How do you go yeah. out and talk to people with current technologies, LinkedIn, or those kind of tools? And I just think it all comes around. Oh, know. it does. It comes back to you. I, I believe that. You know, you reap what you sell. You really do. So I think it's a good thing that you, you have that perspective. I, I think a lot of people are short-sighted when they don't. If they're just looking at it saying, what's, I just need to know bottom line, what's in it for me? Ah, it's too short-sighted. You know, yeah. you, know, you gotta, you gotta, you know, serve other people, help them out, and it comes back to you. It just does. So, anyway, um, tell us, Perry, your contact information if somebody wants to give you a call. Yeah, my contact uh, information phone number is six five one two three zero three eight six one, and the website is www.perrysolutions.com. Great. Well, you are listening to the Peter McClellan Show. On Business 1570, that's Twin Cities Business Radio, and we're talking about networking today and a little bit of a different twist. we got somebody that's an engineer but also is kind of a connector. It's, it, to me, got to be honest, it's, it's an odd combination. I don't typically think of people in engineering as those who connect and touch, you know, but very cool. We're going to talk more about it. And Perry Perando of Perry Solutions, and Perry's an engineer, but he's also a marketing kind of guy, a networking kind of guy, connects people. And Perry... Um, you know, when I was talking with Angus at, at the nagging moment at, at the bottom of the hour there, we were, I, I brought up the idea of the iceberg and, um, you know, how you wouldn't want to just slam into it. If you were in the Titanic, you'd want to go around it. But you also see you. I got the idea from you and talking, you know, looking at your notes and whatnot, what we we're going to cover today. The I, iceberg can be a good thing, too. This is, it can be used in a positive sense. When it comes to networking, tell us how you see what a what an iceberg looks like when you're talking net networking. Yeah, you know, one of the things I've experienced in both my own searching for opportunities kind of through a network as well as people trying to use me as a network to get into situations is that when you are networking, you only see the tip of the iceberg. You only see mm -hmm. about 10% of what's, what the activity is. Right. And it's oftentimes people get frustrated. This networking thing isn't working. Why am I wasting my time talking and meeting all these people? And yet if you realize that 90% of the activity is unseen to you uh, and there's reasons for it, then maybe the, you'll be a little bit less frustrated with it. Mm -hmm. uh, one of those examples, when I was doing my own job search years ago when I was uh, still working in industry, um, 
I had actually worked with six different people within a company trying to get my resume on the right person's desk. Mm -hmm. And I, it, there just wasn't movement. Um, and I was kind of getting frustrated by it, but working with all six, trying to, trying to make something go, I finally got to the point in my mind of saying, well, I've, I've given up. And within about a week of that, I got a phone call for an interview and ended up getting the job. Mm -hmm. And, and I, so, I mean, I'd always, I'd heard from certain people that networking is kind of like this iceberg. You only see 10%. Well, now I experienced it. Uh, then when I was with, within the company and even now when I'm working with companies, for instance, one of the things I do with organizations is if, if they find me and needed me to help them solve a problem, sometimes the problem goes beyond what I have competence to help them with. Mm -hmm. And so I'll ask them uh, if... I do a lot of medical device work. I'll ask them, do you have someone on the manuf to help you with these manufacturing questions you have? And their answer will be no. Well, I can find someone that can, can do specifically what you need for the type of product you have. I'll also ask them, do you have anyone that you're using for regulatory support that, to get this through the FDA? And again, sometimes it's a deer in headlights. Well, you know, maybe not. And so, well, is there anyone that you're working with or might want to work with? Not really. Well, there's some people I can go talk to. Mm -hmm. And and so it's really, I end up forming a team, and instead of the company work, trying to go find, you know, four or five people maybe on their own to form that team to solve their problem, they can do it through me, and I'll find resources beyond what they already have existing or comfort with. Wow. And to be able to do that... You know, I don't promise them, well, I can go get such and such or, um, I mean, I have some pretty strong contacts out right. there, but I don't want to promise them. No, you can't make promises, but it, it, it certainly makes a lot of sense that if you've had um, experience helping people, you know, take a product to, to market and, you know, what, what, what does the process look like and, and what are, you can, I guess, clearly see what, what parts of the process might be missing for that first time company that's all excited, you know makes a lot of sense to me to, to say, wait a minute, you know, maybe there's something else here you're, you're, you know, you haven't explored yet that you're going to need. Yeah. You know, because we often don't know what we need, you know, especially if it's your first time doing something like that. And so what the big thing I do then is it kind of relates to the iceberg principle yet is I don't tell the client a lot because I don't know a lot yet. Mm -hmm. I go talk within my network. Are you available? Mm. Is this the type of project you'd work on? How would you know if this is the right fit for you as a to help me and help this company. Um, and so I try and get from them, trying to get that right fit, not just finding a resource, but finding the right resource. Right. I may go talk to three different, I did this with a market research question that was asked to me recently. I went and talked to three different people to try and make sure that, that I understood, number one, when the right opportunity would be um, or to bring in each one of the three, because they mm -hmm. all three had different skill sets that may fit. So I didn't want to tell the company, well, you're going to be talking to Mark, or you're going to be talking to Peter, right? Uh, or you're going to be talking to Jill. Sure. I want to go talk to those people first. Sure, sure. And understand what they needed. So the client only saw the 10% of what I was talking about, mm. but there's 90% more work and activity going on, because I didn't want to promise them something I'd didn't know I could follow through on yet. Well, that makes sense. I mean, it's yeah. If, if uh, you, you have to see what see what the terrain is and what's what they're going to need. Um, I would think I you know, I don't know anything about it, but I would think that that's probably a whole industry that that just helps people deal with the FDA and get, getting oh. ready for that process. I mean, I would think in in my line of work in the financial services, there's whole departments that every broker dealer has called compliance. That's sort of an oh. interface between. You know the people out there like me that are in the in the in the field, so to speak, and then those who are, you know, with with the SEC or FINRA, you you, you have to have that, uh, you know, compliance compliance you know mandates. You know, you have to understand what the government's doing, what they're requiring, what's what's crossing the line, what isn't. You know, what you can do, what you can't do. I would think there's similar, you know, and how would you know that if you've never never, uh, you know, gone through that process? And if you only read what's written. That's not maybe what's current, or that's maybe not the yeah. trend or the direction things oh, are going. Oh, absolutely, because it's, it's changing constantly, and it, it is certainly in my industry. And an FDA, just within, I think the last, I think it was about a year ago, uh, with the change in administration with Obama coming in, mm -hmm. there's been some changes in leadership at FDA. 
because there's actually a lot of fear in the industry now of what's going to happen different. Are they going to mm. be uh, tighter on certain controls, some of the compliance? You know, where does all this lead? And again, if you haven't gone through this process for 15 years or never gone through it before, uh, it's entirely different from five years ago. And even some companies I'm hearing is different than just a year ago. Yeah, I, I think there's uh, there's good reason for fear because I, I'm not convinced. Uh, you know, you talk about the specifics of, of the FDA and how, how the 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 degree of expertise somebody would have to to, to have uh, in in our industry uh, in financial services. We have the same fear because there are people at the top who may or may not really understand what they're trying to to do. You know, they have a, a great idea to how to regulate and create more regulation, but they don't necessarily understand the impact or what it means for yeah. the industry at large, what it means for the public at large. So I, I yeah, I'm not a I'm not a big regulation guy. I I, I mean, you have to follow them, uh, but I I wish we had. I think we have enough if we just you know. Uh, follow through with what we have do we really need to create a whole lot more regulation that's that it's uh i don't know it's my hot button so we'll, we'll jump yeah. over that because i could go <laughs> on a tear over that one i just i'm not a big pro government government is not the answer it never has been and um uh, i just think that's it's, it's a, it, there's a tendency to want to uh um stifle business and, rather than grow it than support it um yes it has to be within bounds but I don't know, uh, frustration. But let's get back to networking because sure. we'll, we'll go down that rabbit trail and I'll, we won't get off it. So, um, okay, but uh, so you do that. You, you are helping people to, to do that. Now, you also do stuff with uh, the this, this social networking, LinkedIn and, and, and networking groups. Tell us about that. How does that work for, for your client? How do you get them going in, in, in LinkedIn, for example? Well, actually, the, um, you, there's several points that I think are essential for good so what I'm calling good networking, mm -hmm. and some of them violate the rules. Uh, you know, as far as LinkedIn, I'm certainly on there. Mm -hmm. um, but if that's your source of networking, it, it's a pretty sterile environment, mm -hmm. and it's really still trying to use it to um, to talk to the right people. You know, see if the right people are even out there that, that right. you might want to meet. Um, but I think a lot of people find those either new technology in LinkedIn or. I need to go to this networking group, and it's very constraining. Mm -hmm. And I've already told a couple stories about a meeting I was at yesterday or a gathering I was at, and I, I prefer just so-called going where people are at. Mm. Um, yeah, though, I mean, don't ignore some of those functions, but just go where people are at that are like you. Because mm -hmm. uh, the one thing LinkedIn doesn't necessarily show you is are they going to be the same fit, same personality? Mm. Not, not that it has to be identical, but it right. can't be 180 degrees. Yeah. And so as opposed to going to the formal events, which are, you know, let's put on the suit and tie and let's go hand out a bunch of business cards, that's not my view of it at all. Mm -hmm. It's more, in fact, I, I had these from yesterday's gathering. It's a four-hour time together and before and after. Mm -hmm. I walked away with three business cards. Okay. Um, my goal wasn't to go give out my business card. In fact, I found out I only had one in my pocket at the time. <laughs> you know, it was a networking opportunity, right? But I'm more interested in getting their card than just randomly giving mine away to as many people as I can, because they're probably not going to call me unless they have a need and they like me, right? And and not that it's a selfish goal. Uh, actually, it's last time I talked a little bit about basketball, so I'll throw in one little basketball story. Otherwise, people won't. They'll think it's maybe an imposter today. Yeah. <laughs> but I always tell good shooters. I said, if you want to be selfish as a shooter, set more screens. Because the screener is always open. Mm -hmm. And similarly in networking, if you want to be selfish um, about networking, then try and help other people. And so I went to these, this gathering yesterday, and I'm talking to different people, trying to understand the stapler guy and this lady whose husband had this electrical issue with a product he was working on. Mm -hmm. I know way more about them than they knew, know about me. Sure. I didn't necessarily give them my card. I make them ask for it because if they don't ask, they really don't care. Right, right. And it's those kinds of things that I do in those events. So I wasn't trying to go meet, you know, come back with 50 business cards after yesterday's event. I came back with three cards, and I guess one of them I knew before I even went to the meeting. So it wasn't a big deal. It was just their updated card. Yeah, yeah. But, I, 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 think, I think you're on to something. I, I, I uh, have the highest regard for Terry Slattery, Terry Slattery, who's a uh, sales trainer. And he, 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 that's exact, his pet peeve exactly there. People go to these things, and they just, you know, litter the place with their business card uh no 
no, it's that's just it's it's a waste of time. It yeah. really is. It's it's not productive, you know. And the ones that the ones that kind of get to me sometimes at those types of events are the ones that are just the slick, so-called networking people. Yeah, yeah. You know, they come in, they have their so-called elevator speech, and they're going through all this stuff, and it just my skin crawls a little bit. Yeah, it's cheesy. It's yeah. cheesy. It's not taking the time to pause to say what what is it you do? How, you know, and how, maybe you know maybe there's an opportunity for you to be of some help to them. And uh, it, what goes around comes around. I'm, I'm thoroughly mm-hmm. convinced of that you're going to reap what you sow. You sow goodness into other people, kindness, extend yourself to them, even if there isn't an immediate payback. So what? You know, yeah. ask some questions and right. and uh, and if they if they never ask you a question, at least you learn about. I mean, I've learned a lot about people's hobbies that I really would probably never do, but you find out why it was their hot button and why it was interesting to them. And so I got something out of the conversation, but certainly not looking to give out a gift business card. We're nearing the end of this segment, but explain a little deeper why, why it is that if you really want to be selfish, you serve other people. Tell, tell us more about that. I'm intrigued by that. Yeah, it's the more questions I ask other people, the more that they, and it's not in a, a way to be selfish about it. I mean, it's not a manip- manipulative no, way no, of doing it. No, I wouldn't think it would be. No. I mean, because people see through that. Oh, heartbeat. absolutely they would, yeah. And, and certainly it won't sustain. Um, but just asking natural curiosity questions. Uh, I want to learn more about that. I'm curious how that's working for you. And if I can connect them with someone that can help them, even if it's not me and I don't get a penny out of it, as we talked before, it all comes around. Oh, yeah. You know, there's going to be, and it may not be directly from either one of those two people. Right. It's going to be something that just drops in my lap. Yeah. And I'll just say from my own personal business in 2010, it's beyond what it was in 2008. Yep. Already. Yeah. And that was with doing a lot of networking in 09. Oh, neat. I mean, for other people. Yeah. Yeah. You planted seeds, seeds that eventually start to, to pan out. They, they bear fruit. Yeah. And kind of hard to, hard to quantify or measure exactly what, you know, what happens when you're in that thing. Cause like you say, 90% of it, you don't see yeah. kind of below the surface, you know, so to speak. But anyway, uh, Perry, we're reaching the end of this segment. Uh, give our, our listening audience your contact information again, if you would. Yeah, sir. Sure. Peter, it's my phone number is 651-230-3861. And my email address is Perry at Perry's solutions.com. Excellent. You are listening to the Peter McClellan show on business 1570. Uh, Twin Cities Business Radio. And uh, when we come back, we're going to continue to talk about this important aspect of business, networking. You know, and are you coming at it from the right attitude, the right spirit? Serve other people, help other people. It's going to come back to you. That's effective networking. That, that I believe, is successful networking. We're going to continue on that when we come back. Stay tuned. A service of Salem Communications. When the markets become as volatile and confusing as they have over the past year, even the most patient investors may come to question the wisdom of the investment plan they've been following. At the 401k Latte Company, they've seen many difficult markets come and go. They can empathize with people struggling with the current environment. And they would like to help by offering a cup of coffee and a second opinion. Simply make an appointment and together you'll go over your financial goals and what your investment portfolio is doing for you. You may be on the right track or you may need to look at alternative options. Either way, 401k Latte is dedicated to explaining the situation in plain English. Call to schedule an appointment today at 952-882-0400. 952-882-0400. Give them a call and they'll get the coffee brewing. 952 952- 800 9528820400 for the 401k latte company why do i serve in the us navy for freedom freedom of religion what america stands for why do i serve in the us navy for honor everybody and watch out for everybody freedom to vote democracy freedom to go outside and play with my kids i drum in the navy to serve my country every freedom that we have the right to raise our kids in peace my little brother my wife, my kids, our children's children, the United States Navy. It's not for ourselves alone that we serve. When it comes to estate planning, you're going to be bombarded from all sides with advice about how to set up your financial legacy. 
Your accountant may encourage you to go one way. Your financial planner may pull you another way. So how do you make a fair decision with so many conflicting opinions? Daniel Reif here at the Reif Law Office. If you're looking to make plans for your estate, you should talk to a lawyer like me. I'll work with your accountant and a financial planner to make sure you have the best financial future possible. If you've got questions about wills, trusts, or estate planning in general, I urge you to talk to me. To schedule an appointment with Daniel, call 612-723-4320. That's 612-723-4320. Or look him up online at rifelawoffice.com. That's R-E-I-F-F lawoffice.com. Remember, 612-723-4320. The Rife Law Office, sound legal counsel to protect your business, family, assets, and future. Stocks falling for a second day. I'm Mark Mills at Bloomberg World Headquarters in New York. Stocks are down again as Germany's ban on certain bearish investments and a jump in mortgage foreclosures to a record triggered a flight from equities. Germany's ban on naked short selling spurred concern. Investors will lose methods for hedging against losses in risky assets. Also weighing on stocks, a report showing a record share of the country's mortgages were in foreclosure in the first quarter as job losses caused homebuyers to fall behind on monthly payments. LPL financial investment strategist John Canale says stocks will move higher when market emotions settle down. Once this crisis mode passes in Europe, I think people can refocus on the fundamentals and I think you might get a lift to, of, of stocks back to their uh, highs of the year. Dow Jones Industrials down 65 points at 10,446. The S&P 500 off 5.5 points, half a percent at 11.15. The Nasdaq down 18 points at 22.99. That's a Bloomberg market. Business 1570. Westbound Crosstown slow 28th to France right now on 36 eastbound. You're tight 35W to Dale. Three accidents on 55 at Lexington. 35E southbound slow Roselawn to 94. Northbound tight Randolph to 694. 35W is heavy 94 to the Crosstown southbound. And northbound watch out for an accident on the shoulder before 494. 494 is tight eastbound West Bush Lake to 35W. Northbound there's a crash at 94 on the side. 94 itself westbound you're heavy 280 to the Lowry Hill Tunnel. And eastbound is tight Lexington to White Bear. This is the Peter McClellan Show on Business 1570. And welcome back to the Peter McClellan Show. If you're just joining us, you missed a great show. Go back to the uh, uh, website and, and let's do it again sometime. But we're speaking with Perry Perendo of Perry Solutions and talking about networking. And uh, Perry, at the break, we were talking about, you know, when, when people network from a place of panic, Oh, what was the comment you made? It was, it was really poignant. Well, I just say a desperate networker is a bad networker. Yeah, yeah. And the... You can smell it. You, you can smell the desperation. And yeah. It, yeah. it really is, it puts people off. Absolutely. I mean, if you come in, here's my business card, here's my elevator speech, people kind of run the other way. Yeah. And you really want to come in. And one of the things that, that I've seen and part of my motivation for, for doing this show is I've had so many friends I've tried to help. And right. in fact, I do part of a uh, mentor program at the University of Minnesota with the engineering school. Neat. And what I found in that, those experiences are people come to me and say, Perry, can you help me get a job? Mm -hmm. And kind of the answer is no. I mean, I want to help you get the job. Mm. And so unless you can help me help you, I'm going to be of limited value. Not just a job. Not just a job. Mm. And yet, if you've just been laid off and you want to feed the family, there is a sense of urgency. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I do appreciate that, but at the same time, unless you can tell me, here's the objective I want to have, here's right. the types of skills that I have I can bring to a job, here's how I like to work, now I can help you. Right. Um, you know, someone said, well, I'm interested in 3M. That's a kind of a typical example. Well, I know so many people at 3M. Break it down a little bit. What, what area within that company, what types of things would you like to do? And then that may trigger for me the right people for them to sit with. Oh, I believe it would, yeah. I mean, that's like saying I want to live in the United States, uh, kind of a big place. There's <laughs> a couple options out there <laughs> yeah, for you. There is, you know, there really is. Wow. So, um, yeah, I, I, I like this. I'm hearing this theme in what you're saying about giving back. So you're actually part of a mentoring program as well. Yep, I've done that Very cool. for several years. And Good for you. In, in whether it's students or it's experienced people, the same thing comes down as what do you want to get on that job? Why is it people don't know what they want? Yeah, I, yeah, that's a really good question. I'm not sure what it is that 
you know, separates my, say, someone like myself that seems to have kind of a clear kind of purpose and focus what you're going after and other people that kind of jump into a job and just get comfortable. I think they kind of turn off their mind of maybe of, of, uh, of trying to find those, those kind of edges and what their purpose of being there because it kind of serves a role for them. Yeah. If you kind of take your eye off the ball, it can be, you kind of forget where, where, why you started there or what right. you're trying to accomplish from it. But you absolutely do have to know what you want. Is, you know, I've asked people it's, that for many years. It's imperative, absolutely. What do you want? What do you want to get out of it? Because then later on people will ask me, you know, they'll tell me they're frustrated in a position. So why do you originally take the job? Is it still offering those things? And well, if it is, then did your objectives change? Well, having a paycheck's great when you just, you know, you have to feed the family, but you want to go beyond that too. You yeah. want to feed the family for now, but keep keep pressing forward. Well, Perry, once again, this time has just flown by. Thanks for coming back to the Peter McClellan Show. We've enjoyed having you today. Yeah, it was great to be here again. It absolutely was. Uh, tell us again your your contact information. Uh, phone number is six five one two three zero three eight six one, and my uh, email is perry at perrysolutions dot com. Well, it's been uh, it's been enlightening and encouraging, and uh, you folks out there with lots of experience that are connectors like Perry, help people connect. It's a good thing. It'll come back to you, and once.